Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about ideas. So let's get into it. So the question in question was Frederick, what do you do what do you do when you run out of ideas to solve a problem with your code? I take a bath and then I shut down the lights and then I kind of just drift off and see what happens usually. Uh, assuming that I'm at home. If I'm in the office or I have like, I don't really have that op option at the time because I don't feel like taking a bath. It's not a bath type of problem. The, the, the bath type of problems are usually the more the visionary type of problems when like it's not just a specific bug or something that I'm dealing with. It's more like what is the future of this grand project that I'm working on and how am I going to shape the, the series and ones into the shape that I need to build this future. Uh, if that's not the case, I usually do... Well, I poke things with stick. I poke, poke it with a stick. I poke the problem with a stick. So usually what I do is that when I don't really know exactly how to solve it, I ask for help. Uh, see if some... Like I kind of just post this as sort of my problem to my coworkers. And I hope that one of them is sort of knows what is going on. It's not that often that that happens, uh, usually. Uh, sometimes you're lucky and it turns out that there was just a damn configuration somewhere you didn't know about or something in the in, like the build environment or whatever that you didn't know about or something that someone uh, has known for quite some time and never took the time to fix but they found this nice little workaround that if you just spin three times and run that script it's all gonna work. Uh, but usually that is what I do. I ask my coworkers. That's why it's so nice to have coworkers. God damn, it's nice to have coworkers. You know, you, that's the thing I tell people. Coworkers and having, I mean, if you're a junior especially, it's nice to have more experienced coworkers because there are so many things in software where you're gonna just hit a wall and you're gonna sit there and you're not gonna really know how to solve it. And as I said, like you can poke things with a stick, but sometimes you don't really know how to poke or like where to even start solving that problem and then it's so so nice to be able to just say hey guys I'm kinda of stuck on this thing does anybody have any ideas and even if they don't know exactly they might be able to, to give you like a, an idea of like what's gonna be the, like kinda of mentally unblock you if that makes sense that's the sort of the rubber ducking thing that you've probably heard about you rubber duck with someone and you try to explain the problem to them and by just trying to explain it and then having them maybe fire back a few questions related to what you've checked they're gonna go well wait did you check that did you check that and I kinda go yeah, I did check that, but I didn't check that. And then you're unblocked mentally, and you can t try the next thing and start poking with the stick again. And so I've never really gotten to the point where I've run out of ideas how to solve a problem per se, because, I mean, as a software developer, you don't really have that option. There is, like, there is nothing magical about your code, ever code is code it's uh, at the end of the day it's just a, a predetermined a completely uh, a pre predetermined set of events that is happening so you can solve it it's more about how <laughs> and how is always a dis journey of discovery where you know you can add log statements you can use debuggers there are many 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 ways how to do things my personal favorite poke it with the stick approach is depending i mean if if i am blessed i'm working in a language where i can use a debugger which is my favorite tool for the job Unfortunately, in today's modern ecosystem, it's not a given that you can always use a debugger, but it's so nice when you can and then it works and like it's such a blessing. If that is not possible, say if I'm working in a uh, well to a the point it is po it's possible to do this in TypeScript and JavaScript and like these sorts of languages to a point, but sometimes it's actually not that easy to make the debugger w play nice with you and it's simply easier to just add a bunch of log statements everywhere because basically whenever you're doing something it sort of it becomes for me a binary search basically where you just pick 
and like you, because when you have an issue with your code or when there's something that you're trying to achieve you sort of have to start with do I fully understand what I need to do like what is the end results that I need to achieve and then you usually have some type of output or like some unexpected result and then you know that you, right before that happens I want to know what is the state of the code like what is the values like what is all the things that make up the result that I got where, where like I need to just go and look at each of those things it's sort of it becomes an investigation like where where is everything what, what state is it in right and that's very abstract I know but uh, it's actually the only way I can describe it because sometimes you're debugging like you know cloud environments or uh, like virtual machines or you're debugging a script like actual code or you're debugging like unexpected behaviors with I, there's so many things that can be going on right but in code it's usually as simple as you have a function or something that is outputting something weird and you don't really understand why and then you just pick an arbitrary point right before the problem and you say alright I want to know where did the problem happen here yes or no and then you run the program and you see yeah the problem is, is uh, either it happened or like it's not there it's actually a little further down and then you do the binary search thing you go further down in this call and check all right here is it still a problem here or maybe you go upwards and you go well no it's actually up higher I didn't start here it started somewhere earlier and then at some point you're gonna find like you're gonna start tracing your steps and f sort of figuring out the general area of where the problem is and then when you've looked at that thing for long enough usually you will come to a conclusion either something that you know about is happening like there's coming data from some place that isn't really ha is supposed to happen or something that is like arcane and I've seen this guys I've been in problems where I can't explain why the thing is happening like a value might just change for no apparent reason in an unexpected way and if I'm in JavaScript that usually means that I am still referencing the original thing and I need to just do a very cheap destructure to to up to copy the the object that I'm looking at or something like that and all of a sudden now the entire problem is gone because I was actually maintaining a mute I'm was mutating a reference when that's the whole reason people want to do immutability for example uh, and but I mean it's not just the sorts of things that can happen but I hope that you can get a sense of what I'm talking about sometimes some things are you can actually look at the exact place where the problem is and not still understand what's going on and in that scenario you know good old googling skills is the way to go and then when that doesn't work it's back to the drawing board like just kind of putting log statements and figure out okay it's the problem here and you kind of poke it more and you try to do weird stuff you try to like just mess around with it see what happens if I do that what happens if I do that you sort of experiment with it until it works so what I want you to take away from this is that uh, what I do when I run out of ideas of solving a problem is that I cry a little bit and um, Usually I like to blame people internally, I like to get really angry with all the dumb people of the world, myself included, and go, why is this problem in my lap? And then when I collect myself again, and I'm very calm and nice again, uh, I go and ask my coworkers, please, 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 can you explain to me why this is not working? And then they usually answer and give me a few thoughts on what I could do and sometimes it's something that I can use and sometimes it's not. And when I still can when when I've reached that point I go back to doing the thing I did before I asked them. Poke stuff with a stick. Use a binary like my person as I said, my person like if you it's it's uh, like git bisect and things like that if you're doing small commits, it's the greatest thing in the world and log statements and if you have a debugger it's the best thing ever just try to find the general area where the unexpected thing is happening and then just watch that thing happen a million times and like change things a little bit things that seems to be relevant until you start to see a pattern in the unexpected behavior because the second you get to see the pattern in the thing that's usually when you're very close to understanding what the actual problem is. This gets a lot easier, like the poking takes less time the more experienced you get and the more holistic understanding you have of the entire environment but sometimes you might not be able to figure it out completely by yourself but at the very least you can narrow the scope to yes this this is the thing that is happening and then you go back to your coworkers and say this thing is happening in an unexpected way why is that and then if you're really really lucky you have some type of super programmer who's gonna go and go like well yeah Frederick 
you should be doing that. Don't you know this language works this way or this environment works that way or this this configuration that sets that automatically on a Chrome job that you didn't know about. Oh, cool. Now I know what the problem is. Have a great day.